and praise to God alone. Good morning. Uh, 518, by all your saints in warfare. Uh, it's the, the hymn that is often used on saints' days, or days where we commemorate the saints. Today, June 11th, well, today for you, tomorrow for me, June 11th uh, is St. Barnabas the Apostle Day. Uh, we know Barnabas is one of Paul's assistants. Verse 17 uh, from him 518. For Barnabas, we praise you, who kept your law of love, and leaving earthly treasures, sought riches from above. O Christ our Lord and Savior, let gifts of grace descend, that your true consolation may through the world extend. So that's the that's the hymn, 518, by all your saints in warfare. Uh, the Treasury of Daily Prayer is kind of nice because on Saints' Days it, it gives a little information on the saints. So they have here, Barnabas was a Jew, a Levite born in Cyprus, one of the first disciples of the apostles, and Paul's traveling companion until the 16th year after the resurrection. He is mentioned in Acts a lot, in 1 Corinthians and Galatians. Part of the sermons of Barnabas is recited by Clement of Alexandria in his Stromatus. Quote, Before we believed in God, the dwelling of our heart was corruptible and fragile. Truly, it was a temple made by hands when it was full of idolatry and was a house of demons. But behold, it has been built gloriously into the temple of the Lord. How? By receiving the remission of sins and by hoping in the name of Christ, let us become new and recreated because God truly dwells in us. How? When these dwell in us, the word of his faith, the calling of his promise, the wisdom of justification, and the mandates of doctrine. Barnabas is the same as, his name is the same as Son of Consolation, Acts 4, from Bar, Son, and Nefesh, Recreate, Reviver, Console, and so on. Uh, Eusebius writes that he was one of the 70 disciples, one of the 70 that were sent out by Christ. So, St. Barnabas the Apostle Day today. Um, good morning again to all of you. Uh, this is our this is our Thursday devotion, June 11th. Um, you find me recording this actually after the Wednesday night service because things were just that way with getting ready for tomorrow's stuff for VBS. Um, quite a rain we had. Um, when I left home, we were over an inch and a half. It'll be interesting when I get home to see what the final tally is on the on the rain gauge because we had quite a quite another downpour uh, just about the time church was starting. I was joking with Neil and Geraldine that I thought they were going to have to swim into the church. And so um, let's get down to business. If you've got your um, Hymnal, page 295 in the LSB, you'll find daily prayer for individuals and families, and I have my treasury of daily prayer as always. Um, and so we will, in remembrance of our baptism, make our beginning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, excuse me, glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our psalm today is, uh-oh, our psalm today is Psalm 34. Psalm 34. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. O magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant, and their faces shall never be ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him, and saved him out of his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. 
Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints, for those who fear him have no lack. The young lions suffer want and hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Come, O oh children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. What man is there who desires life and loves many days that he may see good? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Turn away from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are toward the righteous and his ears toward their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil to cut off the memory of them from the earth. When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. He keeps all his bones, not one of them is broken. Affliction will slay the wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be condemned. The Lord redeems the life of his servants. None of those who take refuge in him will be condemned. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. 8 o'clock at night, 8, 8, 36 at night, water instead of coffee. Our reading, again, comes from the Gospel according to St. John. The, uh, the that doesn't look right. Uh, yeah, that's tomorrow, um, which will be the next day for you. When I'm back with you live on Friday. Um, here we are. John 13, verse 21 and following. After saying these things, Jesus was troubled in his spirit and testified, Truly, truly, I say to you, one of you will betray me. The disciples looked at one another, uncertain of whom he spoke. One of the disciples, whom Jesus loved, was reclining at table close to Jesus. So Simon Peter motioned to him to ask Jesus of whom he was speaking. Jesus said to him, So that disciple, leaning back against Jesus, said to him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, It is he to whom I will give this morsel of bread when I have dipped it. So when he had dipped the morsel, he gave it to Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot. Then, after he had taken the morsel, Satan entered into him. And Jesus said to him, What are you going to do? Do quickly. Now no, no one at the table knew why he had said this to him. Some thought that because Judas had the money bag, Jesus was telling him, Buy what we need for the feast, or that he should give something to the poor. So after receiving the morsel of bread, he immediately went out, and it was night. When he had gone out, Jesus said, now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and glorify him at once. Little children, yet a little while I am with you. You will seek me, and just as I said to the Jews, so now I also say to you, where I am going you cannot come. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also are to love one another. By this all people will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, where are you going? Jesus answered him, Where I am going you cannot follow me now, but you will follow afterward. Peter said to him, Lord, why can I not follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. Jesus answered, you will lay down your life for me. Will you lay down your life for me? Truly, truly, I say to you, the rooster will not crow till you have denied me three times. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Wow, what a lot of content, right? All this stuff that's happening on on uh, on Monday, Thursday, on the, on the night when he was betrayed. The morsel of bread in the pot handed to Judas, and Judas leaves to receive his 30 pounds and to collect the chief priests, the guards of the chief priests and scribes that they may come and 
take Jesus from the Garden of Gethsemane. And then Jesus says, The time has come for the Son of Man to be glorified, for it is on the cross. It is in his crucifixion that God is glorified, that Jesus fulfills all the promises that God has made in that moment. And having received the sacrifice of his life, then we'll raise him from the dead. But now as he approaches the hour, that hour comes. As it, as it approaches, he is preparing. And he tells his, his apostles, you can't come where I'm going, for he is, he is going to die. He is going to give up his life for us. His blood shed for us. He's told this to the Jews and they would not listen. Now he's telling it to the apostles and they don't understand. Peter says, where are you going, Lord? Where I'm going, you cannot follow. But how can I not follow you? I've, I've followed you for three years. Why can't I follow you now? I would lay down my life for you. You will lay down your life for me, the Lord says. Even as he is preparing to lay his life down for Peter and James and John, the three inner circle of his apostles, as well as everybody who has ever lived and sinned in this world. Everybody who will live until that last day when he returns. He will die for us. He will lay down his life for us, but he will pick it up again. No, Peter. You will not lay down your life for Jesus. You will deny him. And we will too. And we do it. It's, it I've said before, it's a great comfort that, that Peter does this. Because we know that even if, if Peter, who speaks uh, for the apostles in his time, can mess up so horribly. I do not know the man. I tell you, I do not know the man. I am not one of his what great comfort to us that when our time of trying comes. Because Jesus does forgive him when he says, Do you love me? You know I do, Lord. Three times, even as Peter denies Christ three times. But this is the rule he lays down for us in the midst of all of this. A new commandment I give you. That you love one another just as I have loved you. You also are to love one another. And by this people will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. If we can't love our brothers and sisters in Christ, how can we demonstrate the love of Christ in the rest of the world? John tells us in his epistle, which you'll hear read on Sunday, that God is love. And that if, if one loves God, he loves his brother. And if one does not love his brother, he can't love God. So this isn't human love. This isn't, this isn't the love of, of a bride and groom unless that bride is the church and the groom is Jesus, but even that bride is fickle. This isn't the love of, of people. This isn't the love of a person for a pet, though the love of the pet for the person is closer. That, that love that doesn't require anything in exchange. This is agape love. And you guys have heard the agape sermons time enough. But God calls on us to love one another. And in loving one another, we forgive each other. We forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. We can't do it because the old Adam is on us. The old Adam weighs us down and, and, and we're turned into hate and anger and, and disgust with each other, which is what's happening in our world today. We fight and argue. You can't know about me what I know about me. I'm different than you, and you can never understand my situation. Yes, I can. I can because I am like you, a poor, miserable sinner, born in sin, and sin did my mother conceive me. But in God's grace and in God's love, he has forgiven my sins, and he has given me not just the ability and the aptitude, but even by the new creation that he creates in me through the promise of my baptism, through his word, through the faith that he bestows in me, through the sacraments that he feeds and sustains me with, he has called me by his spirit to love you, even as he has loved you, even as he has loved me in those gifts. If we could just see that in the world. 
if we could just love one another, if we could just forgive. Makes me think of the song from the 70s, if I could buy the world a Coke, right? Peace and harmony. It was a Christmas song, but it was Christmas time advertising. But, you know, that's what we need right now. We need people to forget that we are more the same than we are different. And God made one race. He made one people. And all of us fell into sin. And all of us are in need of Christ. And no one is good, no, not one. For their mouths are all open graves. But Christ creates in us a new creation, a new life. A life which reaches out to him in love and receives the love he's given. And then reflects and even becomes a lens for and pours out the love he's given us for each other. Let that love shine amongst us. Let us pray. Almighty God, your faithful servant, Barnabas, sought not his own renown, but gave generously of his life and substance for the encouragement of the apostles in their ministry. Grant that we may follow his example in lives given to charity and the proclamation of the gospel. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Hey, catechism time. We finished the Lord's Prayer yesterday, so today we're going to begin again with the sacrament of holy baptism. This is the way Luther intended the catechism to be, a, a daily practice, a daily immersion in it, so that we might come to know it better. He himself who wrote it said that even though he studied it his entire life, he had never plumbed the depths of it. So the sacrament of the baptism as the head of household should teach it in a simple way. So Luther would say first, what is baptism? And we would respond, baptism is not just plain water, but it is the water included in God's command and combined with God's word. So Luther would ask us then, which is that word of God? Christ our Lord says in the last chapter of Matthew, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Matthew 28, 19. Let us continue with confessing our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he was raised from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, life everlasting. Amen. And we boldly pray that prayer which he taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For then is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our prayers this day, because my friends, it is 8 o'clock at night. We're just going to use the prayers from the hymnal here, or from the, from the treasury of prayer. So the prayers for this Thursday. Wednesday for me, Thursday for you. Let us pray. O oh Lord Jesus Christ, true King of heaven and earth, you promised to your church the gates of hell would not prevail against her, and you still cause your word to be preached and your holy sacraments to be administered among us. But, O oh Lord, the sins of your people obscure the majesty of your bride. Your holy vineyard is trampled and your blessed sacrifice stands neglected. Many think themselves strong and despise the life-giving food that you have ordained for your people for the forgiveness of their sins. Pardon all our arrogance, and do not come to us in wrath to remove the lamp of your word from before our eyes. O Lord, we pray you visit this vine which you once established for yourself and renew us with the sun of your mercy and the water of eternal life. Give us a great hunger for the food of your true body and blood. And let all your faithful people ever be found in the apostles' doctrine, in the fellowship, in the breaking of your bread, and in the prayers. 
we implore you, O Lord, for our altar, that it may be a place where the medicine of eternal life, the forgiveness of our sins, strengthens us in body and soul, that disbelief and impenitence may stay far from all who come there so that they may not eat and drink to their own judgment. O eternal high priest, let the fruit of your spirit grow in us, which is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faith, gentleness, and chastity. Cause us to live in holy conduct toward one another and to the glory of your holy name, here in time and hereafter in eternity. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things. On this day, when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And Luther's little prayer. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, my friends, we've come to the end of my recording. Um, and uh, I, I pray God's blessings on you. Um, Tomorrow for you will be Friday. Um, we will have our morning devotion together at 9.30, and then, um, God willing, and things go well, we will lay our sister Shirley to rest um, Friday afternoon. What a strange time it is, not being able to have the meal afterwards. But soon, soon I say, we will be back to normal. There isn't going to be a new normal for my concern. The world has always been not in a normal since the fall into sin. What we need, my friends, what we need, my brothers and sisters in Christ, is a move towards that love that Christ has for us. So, as we end our devotion, I wish God's peace upon you, and I will see you tomorrow morning. God's peace.